Coming up on this episode of DL Weekly, new villains have arrived at Oogie Boogie Bash, the story behind the gingerbread house in the Haunted Mansion. Some holiday magic key perks. Some atmosphere might go away forever. <laughs> we talk about our Disneyland Park days at D23 and more. DL Weekly starts now. Mika Nala Krista! <laughs> Blah! Hi! This is DL Weekly. Family. Good. You listen? Okay. Don't forget, Ohana! Hello and welcome to this episode of DL Weekly for the week of August 28th, 2024. I'm Teresa Urban. And I'm Teg Bushman. We'd like to thank everyone who supports the show, but this week we'd like to give a special shout out to Lauren L., Tiffany C., Stephanie M., and Allison B. for your continued support. If you'd like to help support the show, get ad-free episodes every week and access to things like our supporter discord and some other fun perks head on over to dealweekly.net slash support to become an official weekly tier now let's get to the news extra extra read all about it deal weekly reports from intrepid correspondents tag and Teresa. you heard it here first ladies and gents breaking news well, we finally have official confirmation of the new villains at this year's Oogie Boogie Bash because the first night of the party has already come and gone. Dr. Doofenshmirtz from Phineas and Ferb is meeting and greeting in the Disney Junior Theater and Hades replacing Cruella in the Hollywood Pictures backlot. Dr. Doofenshmirtz has received some mixed to negative reviews on the look of the face character's execution. I So first of all, I never watched Phineas and Ferb, so I don't really I, know this character, okay. but it is kind of creepy. Well, here, let me pull him up because I, when they were teasing that he was coming, remember, I actually downloaded someone who was watching some yeah. of the Phineas and Ferb episodes on our way to D23. And I think they did a good job as far as like a face character goes for well, yes. this animated character. I think what might, what the negative, rev- like the negative to mixed reviews may might be, he's not as, as well known of a villain as some of the other ones are. You could make that argument with Madam Mim. Maybe a lot of people didn't know who the marvelous, magnificent, mad Madam Mim was until Oogie Boogie Bash. But like other characters like Cruella or like, I'm trying to think of who other, uh, Sid, a lot of them, they're kind of more mainstream Disney villains. He's a, Dr. Doofenshmirtz is, I would say he's a little bit more obscure of a Disney villain. I think for me, what the problem is, is some animated folks come across as face characters better than others. So like a Disney princess is a Disney princess. Like it it looks like a human. This Dr. Doofenshmirtz, the the stylization in Phineas and Ferb is not very similar to what a real person looks like. So the fact that you turn a person into this. Now, I think if they would have done a like character head, Sure, to make him more... Magic spoiler, magic spoiler, magic spoiler. If this was like like a Mickey Mouse kind of situation sure. or something... Or like how Hades was. Yeah. I think that this would have been less creepy. I think what's creepy is people don't look like that. Like, Cruella looks like somebody you might see on the street. Like, yes, it's exaggerated with costumes and stuff. But, like, nobody looks like this in the world. Like, you're not going to walk down the street and see somebody that looks like this. Sure, but... So I think that's the weird part. I To me, I don't think... I don't think it's I don't think he looks weird because I know that he's a fictional character. It's kind of like Ernesto de la Cruz. Like you wouldn't see Ernesto walking down the street. But you Ernesto wouldn't see looks someone that looks like Hades. Right. That's blue. Right. With flaming hair walking down the street. So like I I think both of these characters and Ernesto. Ernesto was kind of the first that we got to see face characters that are much more make much more sense in the cartoon and pixelated animated versions of themselves than what you could do in real life. And I think the hair and makeup team is killing it with these face characters because like Ernesto, you couldn't have, there was no way you could have brought Ernesto to the park. Same thing with now, like how they've upgraded Hades. We had Hades that used to be on the parade float and he was a full, costume character and now we have hades that has again magic spoiler magic spoiler these really convincing prosthetics as well as the blue skin his hair have you watched videos of hades yeah 
insane. But again, so so cool. My my argument here is Hades and Ernesto don't look close to humans. Like he's blue. Ernesto's like a skeleton. The fact that he's like skin color, it's almost like a cone head. I don't know if you've watched the yeah, cone yeah, heads yeah, back yeah. in the day. Like, there's just something strange about it. The, I think that's yeah, what the hard is. The hard thing with with Doctor Doofenshmirtz, the animated version versus now the version that's at Oogie Boogie Bash, is there are some things that are very exaggerated in his animated form that you just can't do. Yeah, it, like like look at like his eyes, for instance. I'm looking at like how giant his eyeballs are, and oh, yeah. how gi- like very exaggerated features there. I think as far as bringing him to Oogie Boogie Bash, I think they did a really great job. As much as you could do. Does that make sense? Maybe sure. if they would have put like safety goggles on him or something like that, like he was working in his lab. Maybe. So they could make the eyes appear more exaggerated. Maybe that would help kind of. Sure. Yeah. Suspend reality a little bit more. You know, they must be doing this because obviously these immersive treat shows, one of the big hallmarks of them is that they communicate with the guests, right? Mm-hmm. So if you had like a costumed character That's true it's they don't really talk so the fact that you want these people to interact with the guests and be a be this real life stepped off the screen kind of person Mm -hmm. i think that's why they're doing the like with hades i think that's why they did the thing with hades i actually think the hades one looks really good too it's almost on the same for me it's on the same level as uh de la cruz because his stuff looked really amazing I think they picked a good actor that like everything worked with. I don't know. I don't know Dr. Doofenshmirtz. So I think that's also part of my problem is like, I just don't know Phineas and Ferb really. Sure. But I think, I think that no matter what, whether people think it's creepy or not, I think that you're right, that they did a great job trying to bring this character to life. And my guess would be that if, if this character is popular, it comes back another year, they might make some tweaks. Oh yeah. Yeah. The thing I need to just geek out so hardcore about with Hades is how stinking cool his hair is. So if you've watched Hercules and if you've seen the animated version of Hades, you know that you can tell Hades' mood based on his flame hair. Typically, he, it's blue. Like he's feeling cool, calm, and collected. His, his hair is blue. But when he gets mad, his hair turns like fiery red and like just he gets all kind of like crazy. They were able to mimic that Hmm. with the Oogie Boogie Bash version of Hades. That's now the face character. And so he like if you watch, there's various videos out there. He'll get upset about something. And not only will the set that has blue flames behind him change to red, his hair also changes colors. And I think that is so crazy cool. The one thing they did do, which I thought was smart, was Hades used to be part of the Frightfully Fun Parade. He now is not and mother gothel has replaced him on the float so i think that's really smart that the treat trail villains only reside in the treat trails and the parade villains are only on the parade because there was some crossover before so those treat trails would have to close so like dr facilier had a treat trail and was part of the parade oh, sure, so they'd yeah. have to close his treat trail so he could you know quote unquote also be in the par- he couldn't be meeting and greeting and also in the parade so that kind of caused a li- like some pauses for the treat trails Huh. Okay, I lied. Isn't Apparently, I did cool? not see that his hair changed colors, but that's pretty cool. It's wild. Yeah, it they did a great job. So, so good. So good. Yeah. We will, do, can you, let's link this for the show notes so others can also see the amazingness that is Hades' hair. <laughs> pretty cool well every holiday season the culinary team at disneyland brings us the haunted mansion holiday gingerbread house well the disney parks blog posted a behind the scenes look at what it took this year to bring the gingerbread house to life how the design came about and how they got it installed head on over to the link in our show notes to see photos and all of the details so this is just always wild because each year that we've been doing this podcast and covering the different various gingerbread houses that have come to life, quite literally, this year, that have come to life over the years. I feel like the teams that put these together have just been, like, outdoing themselves every year. It's just insane, the amount of talent and creativity and just, like, love that goes into this. But not only is it that, there was... I always like looking at the numbers of these things. So there was actually only two hidden Mickeys in this year's gingerbread, which is surprising because it's very, very large. 
Ooh, I didn't realize there was a time lapse video that showed them like assembling it too. That's wildly cool. But it took about 150 hours to build and program this display, which is just in the video. <laughs> I didn't watch this video before. In the video, they're they brought the main mechanism in and they're trying to like program it. And they obviously with programming, anybody who's done anything similar like this, like you do a piece at a time. They have his arm programming first to watch this. Well, so look, it's just like, duh, 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 duh. oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it is five feet tall and six feet wide. It is so cool. I would say the only thing this year that if I had anything to say that was judgmental of it or whatever, is there's so much cool detail here that with the banister in the way, I know we got stopped there, which was really awesome, but it was hard to like see around the like. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of every year because of the ban, you know, because of the banister and you're trying to look down into the room, which. Yeah, I wish, I mean, I understand why the banisters are there. I'm sure it's like a safety thing and, you know, whatnot. And I understand why the gingerbread creation is always on, like, the main dining room table there. But, yeah, it would be nice if you could either raise it up more so you could we could get better looks at it or mm-hmm. if, like, the banisters were there. Or, even better, we always seem to look out every year that our doom buggies seem to kind of have a a slight delay when we're in the ballroom playful scene. spooks have interrupted your tour and it's always in a like a really good spot where we're either like head on with the gingerbread house or just off to the side so we get plenty of time to be able to soak in all of the details but yeah super fun i just can't get over how dang impressive they are like every year i'm just blown away and impressed and every then the next year they somehow do it again it's just it's just amazing Well, Downtown Disney has some new and relocated decor for the season. Some of the decor from the Mickey and Friends tram route has actually come and made a new home in the Downtown Disney area. Well, when we were there, they were putting up the banners and stuff Mm -hmm. in the Esplanade. Oogie Boogie was going up and all of that stuff. I, first of all, there's a photo in the link in the show notes that has the Halloween time pumpkin. So there's these pumpkins that have letters that spell out Halloween time. And it's by the nice big long waterfall that's there. And I was quickly glancing at this and I'm like, they're missing the M. Did someone steal the M? I thought the same thing. And then I looked down and there's Pluto taking the M like playfully. So it was just like, (laughs) but at first I was like, did somebody steal that? Did it fall? Like what happened? Yeah. I was like, how did someone forget the M? Right. (laughs) But no, I it's just Pluto. I used to when I used to ride the tram more, they had a ton of these things on the tram route. So I'm glad that they put these there where I think just in general more people are gonna get mm-hmm. to see it now. Cause they're really they're really cool pieces that they kind of can move and put around everywhere. So and downtown Disney is just like the rest of the resort, always really well themed. And even if you if you're a local and you don't have tickets to go into the park or you don't have a pass or whatever, you can still get a lot of that Halloween spirit just hanging out in downtown Disney. For sure. Well, Magic Key holders have a lot of perks at the moment for the holidays. A new exclusive trading card will be released each week from August 26th through September 19th, Mondays through Thursdays. A magic shot featuring Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove is by the Matterhorn, August 19th through September 14th. And finally, a combo photo op, candy, and commemorative patch Featuring Hades is under Silly Symphony Swings during Oogie Boogie Bash. These are all just so fun. I know a couple of weekly tiers have already gone in the parks and grabbed their first trainee card, which the trading cards are lenticular. So that means if you kind of like move it back and forth, it's two different images. And the first one is the evil queen and the old hag. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So they, they kind of transform before your eyes. So they're very, very cool. So if you can, go grab your trading cards. The magic shots that I've seen with Yzma, fantastic. Yzma is, would be a fantastic character to come and have an interactive treat trail at the Oogie Boogie Bash. She is sassy. She would be fun to have on for a treat trail. I think so, too. I don't know why she... What like they they maybe should maybe one her. day maybe one day not yet but maybe one day oh do they have like the little the bottle the, yes. the poison the poison for Cusco Cusco's poison <laughs> oh that's awesome it's so good and then finally the photo op candy trail and then commemorative patch for Hades under the silly symphony swings 
during Oogie Boogie Bash party time. This is not something new. They've always had a magic key gift and photo op along with candy located under Silly Symphony Swings, but they try and switch it up every year. There's been two times that we got, it was like a popcorn holder, but different different photo op. So the, this year's photo op is themed to Hades. I think it's Hades Throne. And then, of mm. course, you get the, the patch. I like that they're doing these magic key patches yeah something different. i think they're really fun because if you're a pe- like i like collect like just collecting them because they're l- small and easy but this would be so fun to have like a jean jacket or a backpack or something that you put all of your different patches that you've collected on and then eventually you'll have to buy a new bag because you'll have filled it with more patches. patches yeah yeah i wish we were available we we're, we're coming for these things because like these mm-hmm. are cool i'm not i like them they're very cool i didn't grow up i wasn't young and wasn't growing up in the time of Hercules? Hercules. Like, that was oh. later towards my, like, late teen years. Oh, I watched it all the time. And so, like, I do like the music from Hercules a lot. I don't particularly care. I've seen it since, but I don't particularly care for ha- for for Hades, and I also don't particularly care for Hercules himself, but I love the muses. I'd the watch muses, a whole movie yes. with the muses. The muses are amazing. The muses. It's, I think it's a fantastic movie. Pain and Panic were, like, my spirit. I don't know. Oh, yeah, they're all Like, good. I really loved. They weren't my spirit animals, but I just loved I had a weird thing actually now that we're talking about this. The like the villains sidekicks were usually some of my favorite characters of films. Oh yeah. I mean sidekicks in lots of movies yeah, are yeah, good. Yeah. Like in Despicable hey, Me, hey. I love the minions. I love Hey Hey. <laughs> All uh, sorts of good to ones. To go off on even more of a tangent, we just watched Moana with our new exchange student. He had never seen it before. Oh. He also loved Hey Hey. He thought it was the most hey, ridiculous thing amazing. ever. Mm-hmm, He's amazing. Mm-hmm. He liked the movie too. Well, construction will soon begin on the expanded Avengers campus early next year, so some clearing needs to happen backstage. I wish this was not my story that I had to read because I'm very sad about this. (sighs) Unfortunately, one of the hopefully temporary casualties of this is the red car trolley. The maintenance barn for the trolley is where the new Avengers Infinity Defense attraction will be constructed, so it needs to be taken down. No word on if the red car trolley will return or not. And this is like official cast members of the red car trolley were informed of this. So this is unfortunately not just a rumor like I was really hoping it was when this first broke on the internet but yet no cast members that worked the trolley were talked to about this change i it's interesting so i read some comments on the article that we have linked in the show notes and people were kind of split there was a couple people in the comments that were like good because this thing freaks me out on my street it's too big i feel like i'm gonna get hit by it and all this stuff and they they don't like it some people commented on how it's such a low capacity attraction but it adds something that we complain about all the time. It adds that kinetic energy mm-hmm. and it makes it feel like a real place. I hope that they do like Mice Chat has guessed Mapped here out. that they would basically just divert the track ne- before you get to Guardians because there's a nice big open area there for that and put the barn back there like where it could park yeah. or charge or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then you could do all the Avenger stuff. You, you know what's terrible? I shouldn't even admit this, but this is a safe space. I thought they had shifted it because to me, it breaks my mind that, oh, that the red car trolley Avengers. still drives through Avengers campus. Yeah. I mean, only obviously park, it though. only comes, it's only in the beginning, you know, when they bring it out and when they take it in. So it's not like that's constantly happening, mm-hmm. but this must, I wonder if this happens when the park's closed. So they do guess, it at the end of the night. They've I've seen them like you've seen them bring the, it off. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them like take one out because like sometimes they only have one going and they'll sure. take another one okay, out. Sure, but they just they, it just the little thing opens, it goes back and then they close yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but just in my brain for some reason I thought when Avengers Campus came in that they did reroute it so oh. that it it was still within its own land and space. Does that make sense? Because yeah. it really doesn't make sense for it to be driving through Avengers headquarters. And I just got to say this hot take. I would rather we keep the red car trolley than get the infinity defense, whatever. Wow. I, w- I think that that's, how, that's how important I think that the red car take. trolley is. How often do we ride the red car trolley? Not enough. Tank. Yeah, obviously. Not enough. I will also say that I thought it was poor future planning that they put this bar in there because like, come on, sure. like, you know, you're going to build an attraction there at some point. Like, yeah. Anyway, I, I hope that it comes back. I feel back. Like it can shift it. I hope there's people inside of Disney that think it's worthwhile to have. I long for the day 
that we will see the red car trolley boys return and that nice little show because that show was so simple but very effective it was so good and it like told in essence the story of like walt coming to california yep with a suitcase and a dream sorry if i just got the the song stuck in everyone's head but this to me this this hurts my head this is like if you took away main street vehicles. Like that's that's what that's what I look at yeah. the red car trolley as. But I also feel like I feel like this is unlikely that they'll get rid of this. First of all, there's tons of infrastructure for it. Mm. Second, I mean they got rid of they got rid of the jolly trolley too, but wasn't it just a couple years ago they installed they the conductive right. charging? Like I you're feel right. like they wouldn't have invested in that if they thought they were just gonna like get rid of it. No, you're right. So hopefully okay, I like this. You've talked me into not thinking that that's the end. I think it's just temporary. I hope, I mean, I feel like it would be silly for them. I think it would be too. To just take it out. Yeah. No, I think so too. There's, and like, there's so, like, that's so much of Buena Vista Street. Like, the charm of Buena Vista Street is like, you know, it, like, like you said, it just, the, it brings it to life. You've got all of the different citizens of Buena Vista Street that yeah. really bring that area of the park like to life. And you need that activity. That's one of the big complaints we have about Tomorrowland is there's not enough movement in Tomorrowland. It feels dead. Yeah. So in Fantasyland, you've got like Dumbo and Casey Jr. Towards It's a Small World, you have like the boats coming out. You have the monorail mm-hmm. passing. You have the train going by. There's tons of movement with the fountains and stuff in Toontown. In Adventureland, you know, you can see the boats going by and there's fire. Like, there's, in every land, there's movement and kinetic energy. Yeah. And you don't have that in Tomorrowland. And if they got rid of that on Buena Vista, you wouldn't really have it there either. No. Or Galaxy's Edge. But this is the other thing, too, because people are talking about, right, capacity. Yeah, it is a very low capacity attraction. But it's also a very, like, chill, low maintenance attraction for them to, to operate. Yeah. But, again... Look at your main street vehicles. Those are also those, very those low. Are, some of those are incredibly like low compared to what the red car trolley is. And they only run in some parts is. of the day, too. Yeah. Well, in the last time we were on the trolley, they actually were having to turn people away because the trolley was fi- yeah. was filling up. So it is still popular. People still enjoy it. 100% agree. We may be losing the trolley, but something has returned <laughs> that we had lost before. Has returned to Disney California Adventure. The Choco Smash Bar was taken off the Pim Test Kitchen menu last year, replaced by a version, had all the same ingredients, but it was a cake. The candy bar version is back, joining the cake version as an option. I'm so happy this came back. The Choco Smash candy bar, if you hadn't ever got to experience. It was delicious. 100% you needed you need to share this with somebody yeah. because it is a very generous size, but for me it was also very rich. So it was a great shareable dessert. And I think it was a really good value for 8.49 to have this giant size candy bar versus I want to say the cake version was about the same price. Eight, eight. Ni- actually, it was more. Eight ninety nine for the cake version, which was a smaller quantity overall. I'm so happy for this. The problem that I had with the cake is... Did you try it? The cake... No. Mm. The problem I had with the cake was the cake is not thematic. Like, mm. the yes, fine. If you want the flavors that you had in the Choco Smash Bar, fine. The cake is fine. But that's not why I got it. It did taste good. That was a great reason oh for it. Gosh. But the fact that it was this massive candy bar and the Disney food blog explains that it is like a Snickers, Three Musketeers and Reese's all in one. That's true. Which yeah. is true. I love all of those things. I'm glad it was in one thing. You did have to share it. But man, it was like when you order like the candy canes on Main Street mm-hmm. or like you order like the hand pies. Like, yeah, I could buy a pop tart, but that's not a Disneyland hand pie. Yeah. And so, yeah, I could go buy a Snickers or a Three Musketeer or Reese's. But this and like smash them all together. homemade <laughs> one was so good. It was really, really good. And so I was very sad that they got rid of it. I'm very, very happy that they bring it back. And the next time we go, we'll have to get one. Mm-hmm. I, I'm wondering if it, I mean... We'll never know the full details, but when it went away, I I was sad, but not necessarily. This has got to be a time consuming dessert for the Disney culinary team to be putting together. Oh, sure. So I could see how maybe 
like they they just weren't able to keep up with doing it or they were spending too much time with creating these for part guests to enjoy. They just couldn't keep up with doing it that way. So that's why they tried the cake version. My assumption is the cake version probably wasn't quite as popular. And maybe they were able to find a way to be a little bit more efficient with making the candy bar. So it was easier for them to to pump these out because that's the thing. You got to think how many of these things are they selling in a day that they're all making and creating from scratch. Yep. You know, so there's a lot of that. I think the cake could have could have worked if they would have made a truly gigantic candy bar oh, that gosh. they then sliced in like uh, like cake slices. And sure. so you like you're in your brain you're getting a this is your piece of the gargantuan candy bar. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, like if it was the exact same thing but just monster yeah. Like the, I'm saying like, yeah. Exact same thing as the candy bar yeah. monster did. That may have been too much. Like, it too makes rich. me want a taco <laughs> smash bar now. Yes, it does. Well, Magic Happens had its last performance recently, and in its place is a new offering. The Halloween Cavalcade is a short production with a couple of Main Street vehicles and a float with characters in their Halloween costumes. There are also quite a few walking characters as well. It appears to be the walking characters, they're not in their Halloween costumes, but it looks like they're ready to trick or treat because they all have little like pumpkin buckets with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not Magic Happens, yeah. but... They didn't have to do anything, really, but the cavalcade is cute and nice and a, a ton of characters. If you just want to see characters, great opportunity to yeah. see characters, especially if you want to see the characters in their Halloween get ups, because, of course, there's Donald and Daisy and Clarabelle and Mickey and Minnie and Chip and Dale. Not I think I saw Goofy, yeah, Goofy earlier. And Pluto. Pluto. So there's a lot of characters that are there that, of course, there's a bunch of other folks a lot of the same things that you would have seen inside magic happens but they're just out now at the queen of hearts but yeah i think this is good that they did something and didn't just leave it as nothing mm -hmm. but obviously like magic happens is really cool and it'd be really cool if they i mean it takes away a little bit perhaps from the oogie boogie bash if you like you wouldn't have a second parade at disneyland for halloween so this is probably you the best could. thing to give us you could but yeah Oh, I love Maleficent, Maleficent and, the Queen. and the Evil Queen. Gaston. So even the villains are coming out for this. Oh, and then it ends with Cruella. Of course it does. <laughs> Cruella's it amazing. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I, I think that'd be fun. I like your idea of a daytime Halloween parade in Disneyland with then the, the Frightfully Fun Parade for the nighttime Oogie Boogie Bash specific parade. I mean, I think Disney I should go like back to day and both. night parades anyway. Yeah, I, I think I think there's space for both. All right. Strap in, folks. This is going to be a longer one. Some quick construction updates. We say quick from around the resort. The Haunted Mansion extended queue is starting to take shape with the main walls of the new section looking pretty far along in construction. The gift shop at the end of the attraction has begun vertical construction. We don't have walls or anything, but there are some posts. The transformation into Bayou Country from Critter Country is progressing nicely, along with Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is testing on and off currently. Finally, the Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree has a new sign, and the refurbishment of the dining area looks like it is wrapping up. And the bathrooms have reopened there. Yeah, it does. Honestly, the Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree looks like it could reopen in any day. Like it looks, it very much looks ready to go. The Haunted Mansion has been fascinating because it seems like it, they were, they were in that like first construction phase for a very, very long time. Well, since then, like I'm thinking all the dirt moving they did and all like, there was a lot of groundwork they had to lay first, but since then, boom, it is coming together really, really quick. In fact, watching David from Fresh Bakes updates and also looking at Mice Chats weekly, photos that they're taking to it's crazy the amount of progress that's happening week to week to week now so very excited to see that coming together and of course extra excited to see that the gift shop madame leota's gift shop the carriage house is getting some vertical construction finally because that felt like that was taking a long time for that to progress too did you also notice like did these trees come back? Because they there was there no were, trees here. There for a were while. more trees, I think. Because I think it was like I think those tall, skinny trees. But there was a time where none of them were here. They were all taken down because you could see the whole side. Remember, I was saying that like it was weird oh. that you could see the whole side of the of the mansion. Now I'm trying to remember because we we did talk about that, but I don't remember if they took most of like if all of the trees were gone or if most of the trees were gone. All right. So after an extensive search on the internet, Teresa was able to finally find. 
a picture of this that was that there proved are, we weren't crazy. Yeah, there were <laughs> there three tall trees have returned to the right hand side of the mansion where. So back in April, they had a good shot of the side and there was absolutely no trees there. So they are bringing some trees back, which I was wondering if they're going to, because that side of the mansion without anything blocking it kind of is odd because there's no architectural details. Like it's so yeah. detailed on the other sides. Yeah, because it doesn't have like the, the balconies or the ironwork Correct. like the other sides do. Yeah. yeah. Links are in the show notes if you're curious to look at the comparison photos. Other construction thoughts? We were talking about this before we started recording, but over in Critter Country, David from Fresh Baked was able to get some behind the construction walls photos. Basically, there were some knot holes in the construction wall that he was able to kind of peek into. But this was really interesting. There is an extended queue that has been built for Winnie the Pooh that spills out into the main walkway now. So previously, there was a pathway connecting you know, going into Critter Country to the right was where the new like barbecue jamboree is going to be or the Hungry Bear restaurant was. And then before you got to Pooh's barn, that was kind of the entrance to get in. If for some reason Pooh had a, was crazy popular, the line would spill out into the main walkway because there was a railing before you got into like the little water feature in the kind of nature area that was used a lot for stroller parking. Well, now they've actually built like a lane there. So there's a permanent lane built along that fence line in front of Winnie the Pooh to kind of house an extended queue. So basically they're, they're making it so you can't park strollers there so that the, the queue or the line can extend out into that area if needed. Yeah, so we've also linked David's fresh baked video where he has that video of stuff mm -hmm. behind the knot hole and all of that stuff. So he's doing some great work. I love his construction updates. It really helps us get a visual yeah. of what's going on. Because my chat does a good job with like photos and stuff. And there's some other websites we look at that have some good photos. But there's just something about seeing a video that makes it really nice. Mm -hmm. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big row ass man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. I up, down, touch the ground. I think of things to chew. Like honey and milk and chocolate. With a hefty, happy appetite, I'm a hefty, happy poo. A rumbly in my tumbly means it's time for snacks. Well, for this week's snack chat, we are heading on over to Bayou Country and checking out the new menu that's been released for the Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree. This Again, we already talked about this. I'm so excited that they brought the Hungry Bears back officially in some shape or form to Disneyland, to this area of the park. It's not the show, I know, but it's some it's some Hungry Bear representation, which I think is really fun. I was telling Teresa that I wasn't, I'm not a barbecue person, and I'm not really like, I'm not really that excited about a lot of items on this menu. However, I clicked the link and I looked at this. And I was like, that actually kind of like, looks is good. <laughs> so the thing that I looked at appears to be the smoked beef brisket sandwich with tangy barbecue sauce, pickled red onions, and pickled jalapenos served with beer battered fries. I, of course, would have to get rid of the pickled jalapenos because I don't like spice. But the rest of that actually kind of looks good. Some other things that you're able to find once the Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree opens is there's a smoked barbecue combo platter, which has a selection of house smoked meats served with baked beans, house slaw, white bread and pickles, and a choice of two of the following meat items, either pork spare ribs, pulled pork, sausage link, or beef brisket. There's also a barbecue pulled pork sandwich which is smothered in tangy barbecue sauce house slot bread and butter and pickles served with beer batter fries and a smoked angus beef burger and pulled pork with american cheese golden aioli pickled red onions 
bread and butter pickles. Well, that's interesting because there's bread and buckle, butter and pickles, and then there's bread and butter pickles. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I think something got weird on their post. It could so be. I think it's bread and butter pickles because I don't think bread and butter is that. Anyway, and crispy onions served with beer, battered fries. I also like crispy things. There you go. I really want to try the corn ribs plate, which is seasoned with chili lime aioli, parmesan, crispy onions, cilantro, and scallions with house law and beer battered fries. This is a plant-based option that they are going to have there. But basically, I so I must live under a rock or something. I had never seen corn ribs before. So I feel like others may not know what these are. So I'm going to try and describe them the best I can. Basically, it looks like they took corn on the cob, cooked it, or maybe maybe they cut... Anyways, they sliced corn off the cob, but in a way that all of the kernels stayed together and they actually kind of are curled. So it's almost like ribs, ribs. Yeah. but it's corn. I, it's corn! I want to give it a try for sure. They also have a loaded fries topped with smoked pulled pork, queso sauce, pickled red onions, and pickled jalapeno, cilantro, and scallions. And don't worry, your classic cheeseburger and chicken tenders are still going to be available at this location. They will be served with beer battered fries. It looks like the chicken tenders are a plate option that comes with slaw as well. Sides that you can order separately is you can get, of course, beer battered fries. You can get baked beans. Or their house slaw. Their baked beans. I'm not a baked beans fan, but looking at the photo, it looks like if you're a fan of baked beans, these are going to be a good baked bean option. So we've got for desserts, there's a banana pudding, which is, of course, made with bananas with cream crushed wafer cookies, dulce de leche, and toffee, which sounds... That's my pick. Oh, well, you can have that because I'm going to have the funnel cake fries <laughs> dusted with powdered sugar. For an additional charge, you can add some extra sweetness to your funnel cake fries with banana caramel Ooh. dipping sauce. I've never actually had, mm, I don't think, maybe I have, did they have, did they have funnel cake fries at award wieners? Yes. Okay. So I've had these before, but I'm excited for their version of it. And then this whole next section is all beverages, Teresa. beverages galore. So I, the first one just made me laugh and I'm clearly <laughs> there is an audience for this drink because it made its appearance this summer, and it just it has different variations. We're on variation number three now. We have a sparkling strawberry pickle lemonade made with Simply Lemonade, Minute Made Strawberry Smoothie, flavors of lime, Sprite, pickle juice, and a pickle spear. This sounded great until, the until they added the pickle. I'm not... I wasn't like... The, the pickle lemonade when we tried it at Coke Corner... I in my mind was building up and I thought I was I thought it was going to be much worse than it was. So it wasn't terrible, but it also wasn't good. I couldn't even I had my sip maybe two and that was that I couldn't do any more. Yeah. It but, wasn't very good. I know, love pickles, but no. now the, maybe I'm a sucker for for punishment or something. I already know that I don't like pickle lemonade, but now I'm kind of curious. But does adding strawberry make it work better? I don't know. You know what I think you should do? I think you should do the strawberry shortcake lemonade, which is almost the same ingredients without the pickle. It's oh, simply okay. lemonade, Minute Maid strawberry smoothie, and then this is where they start to diverge. A sweet cream topping, shortbread crumbles, and strawberry dust. Ooh, strawberry dust. That's, that sounds fancy. Mm -hmm. And then finally, there's a lemonade iced tea, which is just simply lemonade and gold peak unsweetened iced tea garnished with a lemon wheel, which you can also get any of these beverages in a Hungry Bear mason jar. Which is additional charge, of course, for it. But well, yeah, you get to take it home. But you get to take it home. I'm I am excited for this restaurant. I think it's really fun that they're kind of leaning into a different style of food for this location with the re theme. Yeah, and I think Hungry Bear has been kind of overlooked for a long time. They've had really good food. Well, it's one of the best like eateries in the park because it's we've never had a problem finding us. No. There's so much seating no. and the views like. In they, general, it's going to be great. For me, the, the seasonal offerings recently have really made this location stand out. It's, I mean, it's a, it was a great place always if you wanted like burgers and fries and like chicken tenders. So maybe not the most adventurous eaters would go yeah. there, but they started getting really creative with their menu with all the seasonal offerings and the different drinks and cold brews that they have offered there. So I'm, I'm excited to see that it's getting, the menu is also getting a little yeah. TLC along with just the overall theming of the restaurant. 
Well, we first spoke with our friends over at Where in the Park back in episode 265. Amanda and Kevin create amazing and fun seek and find scavenger hunt games in theme parks all over the United States. Whether you want a challenge at the Disneyland Resort or want to explore a new place like Universal Studios, Knott's Berry Farm, or SeaWorld, there are fun game packs for everyone. From beginner to expert, Where in the Park is perfect for a first-time visit to experience the small details that make the park's wonderful places to visit or to challenge yourself on your thousandth visit to see how well you know the small details. Where in the Park is for you. We have really enjoyed our time using Where in the Park in the park. When we remember to bring it with us, that's been our biggest problem. We have. Yeah, Kevin and Amanda were super generous and actually gifted us with our own packs to try in the park. And we had so, so, so much fun that we've actually now partnered with them so you can by using the link in our show notes it is a way that supports the podcast and supports them we we have so much fun in fact i wish i was a local so we could just go to the park to focus on playing this game because it's just that much fun it is dl weekly announces the boarding of the trivia express non-stop star speeder service to the moon of endor all passengers please prepare for immediate boarding Hello there, it's time to come to Trivia Land. I hope you two are excited. I feel like Teg's probably still going with his overly confident, we're going to do this. You know, I just saw a thing like this week. I don't remember where I saw it now, but they talked about how like, if you have that positive attitude, a lot of times things just work out for you. So uh, you know what? I'm just going to keep going on that. <laughs> that we're going to get, we're going to do really, really well. Well, I'm positive you're going to have a great time in Trivia Land. And always a better time in Trivia Land than in Snack Chat, right? Uh, it's very delicious know. over there in Snack uh, Chat. That's fair, <laughs> but we have like dueling lands now. We have a Snack Chat, mm-hmm. and then we have Trivia Land. It's just like, mm. I mean, you're <laughs> trying to take away my territory. <laughs> well, it's not just your territory, but anyway, let's yeah. move on. Okay, yeah. Four questions for you this week, starting with the first one. Question is: Which side has the steering wheel on the Mister Toad attraction? Oh, it's the, let me think, the the right side. Yeah, it's the right side. Because I usually get in first, and then I'm like, oh, I'm the driver again. And I think the last time I tried to get you to get in to be the driver, because I'm always the driver. <laughs> but I also like to always pretend that we're on the Jungle Cruise, because, like, you know, when the Jungle Cruise skippers, they're just, like, spinning the wheel behind <laughs> yeah. them. So I do that on the toad. I just spin the steering wheel, and I'm like, ooh, here we go. All right, moving on. Question number two from In Liz- fairness, by the way, ooh. it is kind of... It is more to one side than the other, but it's kind of in the middle. <laughs> so Wait, take saying in the middle. Yeah. Got it. No, I'm not saying in the middle. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah, like it, it is definitely. I not... heard I heard in the middle. Oh, my so, goodness. Anyway, uh, that's what I get for saying something. Um, Actually, yeah, paying the price for sure. All right. Second question, then. This one's coming from listener Todd B, who wants to know, other than Toontown, where in the parks can you find a direct call out to who framed Roger Rabbit? Ooh. Isn't there a, is it at Disneyland? Where in the parks? Yeah. Well, no, close. the reason I'm asking is because in Walt Disney World, oh, there is yeah, that. The, yes, the, at the, the Disneyland blinds. Resort. I'm not asking Disney World okay. questions. This is a Disneyland podcast. Where else can you find a direct call out to who framed Roger Rabbit? Is there something like on Buena Vista Street that's like the dude's like law detective office agency? or detective agency? I'm going to go with guy's detective agency thing is on Buena Vista Street. I'm, th- I'm trying to Or think. Hollywood Pictures Backlot, probably more likely. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. You said outside of Toontown? Other than Toontown. Yep. Oh, okay. Not in Toontown. Here's the question. Because I was thinking they've got the mailboxes in Toontown. Yeah. But other than Toontown. I was thinking other than the, like, attraction. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of things like in Toad, how you've got Sherlock Holmes sure. is in there and how the Mona Lisa is hidden in Pinocchio. Pinocchio. I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm I'm thinking in, along the same lines of you take where it's. Do you remember what his name oh, was? No. Eddie. 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 Valiant, Eddie Valiant. Yeah, I think it's like a, like a window, and we'll I'll just go Buena Vista Street. Okay, I have to probably decide between Buena Vista Street and Hollywood Pictures Backlot. Okay, I'm gonna say a, a in DCA, Buena Vista. Oh, or the Hollywood Backlot. Well, because because it, his stuff is all Hollywood based, 
So would it be more thematically appropriate to be there rather than just on Buena Vista Street? I don't know. I'm thinking either Buena Vista or what's the, what's the, I always get this confused. What's the what's the opening street? Buena Vista Street. And no, and then you turn, take a left, and then it's Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, okay. Which goes to Hollywood Picture Backlot. Okay, so I'm going to say Buena Vista Street, Hollywood Boulevard, because I can't make up my. You're mind. just saying both. Yep. Is that acceptable, James? Sure. Because wow. it's wrong. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. you think it's the Hollywood Backlot? Well, hold on. Now, yeah, Hollywood Boulevard, like I told you. Yep. Buena Vista Street, Carthay Circle. Boom. And then the other thing is just performance corridor. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to say Hollywood Boulevard because it seems to me like thematically that's maybe where it would go more. But we're probably way off, but I'm just going to go with that. It's funny because we were just talking at dinner tonight of your two's wealth of knowledge and trying to get yourselves to the right answers. Sometimes you get there, sometimes you don't, yep. but... You still sound smart, so... Maybe. Sometimes. And we like smart people in Trivial Land. Or when we get the answer, we sound completely silly. Oh, that also happens. Yeah. So let's see if that happens on this next one from listener Abby B. About how many times a year is the floral portrait of Mickey Mouse at the entrance of Disneyland replanted? Ooh, like... And uh, if you want to get a little extra, Abby also wants to know how many individual plants are replanted oh each time. Oh, my gosh. But uh, we lot. can focus on that first part. A lot. Let's I, see. So I they do it say, for Christmas and Halloween. So we do it. Okay. So we put it back to Mickey in the beginning of the year. And then in recent years, it goes to Minnie. And then it goes back to Mickey. And then it goes to the Halloween version. And then does it go right from Halloween to holiday? The holidays? I think so. And then it depends on if there's anything going on. Like Mini. when Pixar Fest happened, I think they had like Pixar colors yeah. or like when when they had like their themed years, like the mil- year of a million dreams had like a different design. And mm. I'm going to say five there's, times a year. There's I was going to say it's at least five because that's what we listed off. Yeah. I'll five. say five times a year. Five times. Got it. Like, are you wait? I'm sorry. So the question is. How many times is it replanted yep. or is it redecorated to something different? How many times is it replanted? Oh. So it could be replanting just like they could be refreshing Mickey or it could be, well, Mickey's got his Halloween costume on, needs his Halloween costume. I'm going to go with 10 times a year then. Because I feel like I feel like they don't do it every month because I feel like that's really a lot. But I feel like they do it frequently. From five to ten. Yeah, so are you sticking with 10 then? I'm going to say 10. I think I'm going to stick with 5. Okay. Sticking with 5. All right. And this leads us to our last question. Going back to the dark rides, courtesy of listener Shanna D. In the Alice in Wonderland ride, what is rule number 42? Which, to be more specific, is what the King of Hearts yells to you. Rule 42, the queen always wins. I was trying to be nice, and so I was writing it down so I didn't just blurt it out. <laughs> I You said, oh, which made me think you have an answer, so <laughs> I figured whatever. Yep. Rule 42, queen always wins. Did you change your last answer, by the way? Yeah, I, I scratched my last answer off. I think it's six. <gasps> six. We're going six. Okay. Yep. All right. That's four questions down. Bunch of answers in. Are they right? Well, you got to wait for the other side of the discussion topic to find out. Well, this time for our discussion topic, we're talking about our couple days that we had in the park. You've already heard all of our D23 stuff, but there is still some more D23 stuff to talk about because we have the D23 day at Disneyland that was the Thursday before the Ultimate Fan Event Expo portion kicked off. But slightly before that, we went and experienced something that we hadn't experienced yet. We did. We So the day that we came in was Wednesday, and... We were fortunate that we had a midday arrival, so we still we didn't have a full day, but we at least had part part of a day. And we took that time to do a couple fun things, like pick up our badges for the expo. But we also had access and were able to go to the Company D store again, which was awesome. So we picked up a couple of good deals to kick off our trip. But the highlight, I think, of our first day was being able to experience Din Tai Fung for the very first time. We did not secure reservations. That was really tricky. It was a very popular place to be this weekend. But we did the walk up and like standby 
for seating at the bar, which honestly, that was a ton of fun. I'm glad it that was. we got to sit at the bar. We got seated, of course, next to other parties, but then we got to, we kind of made friends with the other parties and we're asking like, oh, what did you get? What did you enjoy? Because everybody around us seemed to be their first ever time at Din Tai Fung. We got to chit chat with the bartenders as they were working their butts off to make all the drinks for the entire restaurant, but it was really fun. Yeah, so I had gone up and asked about the standby, and they said it was about a, like an hour and a half to two hour wait or something like that. Yeah, and that was for a table. And I said, what's what's the other line over here? And they said it was the bar line. And I said, what's the wait for that? They said, we don't really have a, like an estimated time for that. So we went over there. It wasn't too long. I think, what, maybe 40 minutes we were standing in line? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, 6.39 to we were inside at about 7.00. So it wasn't too bad. It was good. The portions are, it is family style, so the portions are larger. I would say for the buns, order, you know, depending on what you're ordering, we ordered one set of the Long Zhao buns for the two of us. We got the pork, which was recommended to us by the server, the pork soup ones. Very, very good. This is the classic, like, they're known for. Yes. And we got an order of, like, a noodle dish. And honestly, between the two of us, that was plenty of food. We wanted to make sure that we saved room for dessert because they had this super delicious chocolate long jiao bun. Amazing. So good. Tag actually needed a second order because we finished the first one. He's like, we need more. They're so good. That yeah. was a smaller order, though, because it was only five pieces yeah. on that. Whereas the savory, savory ones were... What do you... There was at least... Maybe there was eight buns on that. Maybe there was eight pieces on that. I don't one. remember. I don't have a photo of it, unfortunately. Yeah. Did you take a photo oh, of it? Oh, guess what? I will say that for me, like, I like... Teresa does a little bit smaller portions than I do typically for food. And I think for the noodle dish that we ordered, like, I probably could have ordered that yeah. as my main entree yeah. and finished it. I could have probably, um, But if you're going to get the dumplings and something definitely it's a sharing situation so it was 10 10 dumplings on the okay. savory portion so and that five was a for the really dessert. yeah that was a really generous portion so good so so good we tried the pork zhao long bao delicious highly recommended so those were like the soup dumplings i kept saying buns that was wrong we got the dumplings and then for the noodles we got the noodles with minced pork very very good and then the dessert we got was the chocolate and mochi xiao long bao yum 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 with the cream dipping sauce oh, yes. on the, the side the it was what a dollar i think or something like worth that worth it totally worth it you really do want that because otherwise it's a lot of chocolate but the cream really like tempers the the sweetness a little bit of the chocolate it was very good if you ate the cream by itself it wasn't sweet at all it was just kind of like actual whipping cream without the sugar in it that they yeah. kind of like whipped up yeah but it was delicious. Highly recommend if you are able to take the time to go out of the park to go check it out in downtown Disney. It was wonderful. They do offer reservations. Hopefully you will have better luck than we did. But do even it early. if you don't get a reservation, they do have walk-up availability as well. Just always ask, see what the wait time is like. And if, if you're doing the bar seating though, the one caveat to that was everyone had to be 21 or over to sit at the bar. So unfortunately, like a family wouldn't be able to sit together with their children at the bar. So that's adults only for the bar seating. Yeah. Uh, the next morning, we made sure that we woke up bright and early so that we could get here right as the rope dropped for the first ever D23 day at Disneyland. One of the fun things they did, which we're so glad that we came early, was they were giving away ear hats. So we were welcomed to the park with our very own set of D23 day at Disneyland ears. Very, very cute. Yeah, there was two different ones. There was a black one, and then there was one that had, like, teal accents on it. So we got one of each. I got a black one. And I and got, the teal. got the teal. Go figure. They had a really nice D23 Day at Disneyland display at the tip of Town Square, like where the Mickey pumpkin or the tree usually is, which was a lot of fun. There was a lot of people waiting in line to get photos with this, obviously, because this is something that's not there all the time. It's very, you know, this is the special. first time they've ever done it. It was special. We got a picture with that, which was, it was really cool, actually. For it being there, just I thought it was going to just be there for the day. It sounds like it was here for the weekend, which made sense since the Ultimate Fan event went through the weekend. It was really detailed and colorful and fun. It was much more than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. So this is where we had the most fun ridiculousness of the morning because 
the two first two things we did, we rope dropped the, <laughs> the fuel rod the station. fuel rod station <laughs> because they have the new version of the fuel rod. So Teresa wanted to exchange her old one for one of the new ones, which we was, tried to do it the night before, but all of the machines were empty because everybody's doing everybody's this. Everybody's doing so that's this. Why we did it first thing in the morning. We also the Frontierland one was like super popular, and so was the one on Main Street by the lockers. There was actually a couple of them over there. Anyway. But like at one point there was a line from the fuel rod swap all the way through the frontier land trading post out the front door. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were trying to avoid that. Yeah. And then our first attraction of the day was we rode Casey Jr. Circus Train. We were crazy that first day. For fuel rod and Casey Jr. We almost had an entire train to ourselves on it Casey It was awesome. Jr. It was awesome. Uh, then we bumped into Debbie and her son from did. Designer Park Co. It was so fun. And we were so happy because Teresa was wearing her I was wearing my single, single rider. rider. My single rider bag, which I absolutely love and adore. This is my first trip that I've worn it every single day. Let me tell you, it's been very, very warm as I sit here fanning myself as we're waiting for the parade. Matterhorn Mountains in front of us. Uh, Magic Happens going to start in about about an hour from now. It's been fantastic. The thing that's nice is it carries, it easily has all of my stuff in it, but it's it's like got enough room that I don't feel like it's making me more hot. Like it's not sticking to my back. Like you probably are having a little bit of airflow issue with like a backpack kind oh, of yes. a thing, you know? Oh yes, yeah, with the backpack, of yeah. course. So that's really nice that it's, yeah. it's, it's been very, very convenient. I have enjoyed it. We also forgot that in typical tank fashion, we went into one of the stores on Main Street, yep. and I immediately bought things. I bought the uh, Halloween shirt, yes. and I bought the the like sling bag. The, the sling, sling bag, I guess, bag. is what we're calling it. The Disneyland one that I had seen here before, and this bag has actually been really great for this trip. I know it's not as great as a designer Parco bag because, like, the zippers and stuff aren't as nice and everything. But for me, this has been nice, and compact. it was nice and compacted, and somehow it fits everything I need just perfectly. So. Magical. The only thing that would make it better is there's some way that some way that you could do your water bottle with it. That is true. But I've been lucky to just put it in my pocket. But I yeah. want to take a moment to talk about our breakfast. Because sure. we went over and ate breakfast at the Red, Red Rose, Rose Tavern. Tavern. And I don't know if this is new or if it was just new to us. But I had not seen this before. We both got the pancakes. And they, of course, were Mickey-shaped. So they're obviously already extra magical because they're Mickey-shaped. But they came with this really delicious guava strawberry sauce and then you got a choice choice of side which you could either get bacon sausage or tavern potato bites which are basically what are tater tots tots. but man that guava strawberry sauce was delicious like that made the pancake for me i agree i think it was really good i still put the syrup on just out of habit and then i dipped it into the guava sauce and i thought it was great sometimes those sauces can be like super over rich and i didn't think this was that at all no this is perfect we also walked back at one point to the Fantasyland Theater where they had the train station because the train is down right now for track replacement. And they had a nice little Disneyland Railroad display. And there was three, I think, engineers there that work on the trains. And we had kind of a little conversation with yeah. them that was really nice talking about what their favorite engine what their favorite was. Engines were. And it was interesting because they're like, well, is it the favorite engine to to drive or the favorite engine to ride or the yeah. favorite engine to, you know. So it was interesting because they had different opinions based on the type of engine it was. Talked a little about, like, the history and just, it was really fun. Because they, they have a really nice, if you if you come while the train is under refurbishment, they're actually replacing the track. We learned that from from our, our new engineer friends. But they have a really nice display up by the Fantasyland Theater that had these really cool graphics that talked about the history And just different stuff. It was like an informative little area. And that's where we were able to sit and chat with some of the engineers. So if that's something you'd be interested in doing and you're coming soon, check out that area. Maybe you can have the exact the same experience. Yeah. Of course, we were back there. So we went over to Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway. And both times we've gone on at this trip, the line has said it was longer than it actually ended up being. In fact, we literally just came off of there. This is Tuesday when we're recording this. And they said it was a 70-minute wait. And we got in in 25 minutes, maybe? 25, yeah. 25, 30 was... It was a breeze. 
some other fun things that we got to specific to D23 Day at the Park. We got a really nice little cavalcade. We wanted to make sure we got there early because it was featuring all sorts of different Disney legends. And everybody wanted to see this. The parade and route yes, was packed. was packed. I did feel a little bad because there were some folks near us that didn't know that it was D23. Like, they didn't know that it was... D23 Day at the park, specifically the cavalcade was going to be featuring legends. So it was really cool to kind of chat with them after the parade had happened and kind of point out who these people were, who they just saw. Because, like, when I was explaining and telling them, they were just like, their jaws just kept getting like further and further, like, just kept dropping. They were like, what? Wow. So then I said, if you took pictures, you know, make sure you take, because they had some legends in the fire truck in the beginning. There was a bunch of legends on the double decker omnibus, and then there were a couple other legends bringing up the end in one of the streetcars. But they had banners on their places that they were sitting, so you could read and see who it was if you didn't recognize what they looked like. So that was really fun. I honestly, we don't even know 100% who all was there because we only got to see half of the Omni Mover bus. So there's a couple of legends that were opposite side from us that we couldn't see. But who are some of the people we got to see in the parade? On the fire truck, one of the people that was being inducted this year was Martha Blanding, who works who for the a Parks and Resorts. Star. She was a rock star. If you've heard us, if your last episode where we talked about the legend ceremony, you'll know about her. And especially if you've watched the Disney Plus legend ceremony on there. It's great. I don't know who was on the other side of the fire truck. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of that. But Martha Blanding was in that first thing. She was followed up by Goofy and Pluto and Max and Chippendale. It was Mark Hen was the other person on the other side of the... Perfect. With Martha. And then there was the Disneyland band. And then on the one side of the bus, we had David Stoll and Don Hahn and... So this was the side that we kind of quickly snapped Linda a photo Larkin. of Linda Larkin. So we quickly snapped a photo of, and it was hard to see faces. So we're trying to read the banners that were blowing in the wind. Yeah. So it was a little difficult. Jody Benson was sitting on the top front section of the omnibus. She looked like she was having the time of her life. I mean, that is the best spot on the omnibus to sit, in fairness. On the other side, we had Paige O'Hara and Kenny Ortega on the top. And then on the bottom, we had Bill Farmer, Bill Farmer. and Wing Chow. And then coming up in the rear in the streetcar was none other than Tony Baxter, who's a legendary Imagineer. Of course, that brought us all sorts of our favorites here at Disneyland as well as other parks. And Floyd Norman, who is like crazy amazing animator. We've talked about Floyd numerous times. But if you don't recognize any of these names, I highly encourage you to go look on the D23 website. They do really nice profiles of these people and their careers because they're all amazing individuals. It was, we kind of skimmed over Mark Ken. Mark Ken was one that he was inducted this year and he's an animator. He's kind of yeah. known as the princess guy. He animated a lot of your favorite Disney princesses. Yeah. Very cool. So after that, we kind of beelined over because we wanted to eat at Tiana's and I got something different this time. The last two Me times too. I had gotten the shrimp and grits, which were very good. But I wanted to try the Seven Greens Gumbo this time, and I got it with... I know the andouille sausage is spicy, but I decided I wanted to try it anyway, so I did the chicken and andouille sausage add-on for that. And it was a little spicy, but not so bad that I couldn't eat it, and I thought the flavors were really good. The vegetables in it were amazing and fantastic, and the sauce that they made is also very good. Belle is walking by right now. That's what I love about Disneyland Fantasyland. You just never know who you're going to see. Oh, there she is, yeah. There she is. At Tiana's Palace, I tried the beef po' boy sandwich, which this surprised Massive. me. It was a very generous portion. Easily something to share with someone. I should have shared it. But yeah, I only got about halfway through it. But it was very, very good. The beef was very juicy and very tender. It came with the side of beans with rice on top. They're very good. And the house-made pickles, which are also delicious, crisp, and refreshing. So, very, very good. One of the other unique experiences that we got to see for D23 Day at Disneyland was they had a full TV set up right next to the castle off oh, the hub. Oh, yeah. They were doing all sorts of TV recording yeah. stuff. 
So if you had watched Good Morning America that day or the next day, I think it might have been, Bob Iger had been interviewed mm -hmm. there. There was a few other people that had been interviewed there, but we kind of walked by. When we walked by, there was nothing specifically actively filming, but they were testing all the stuff and they had yeah. a bunch of things going on. It was really neat to see. It was neat to see, yeah. If you're into like the technology of like broadcast stuff, it was neat to see all the different gizmos and gadgets and setup that they had. So that was really cool. That was fun. We headed over to DCA because there was a couple of fun things to do over there. We had missed, there was an early Disney Junior Parade. We missed that because we started our morning in Disneyland. So the, the parade was at 10. So we weren't able to park hop over to experience that, but that's okay. We got to go over. They have this really, they have lots of really fun photo ops. There was this really cool one for Inside Out 2 that looked like you were, you know, stepping into their world. And so when you took the picture, it was very convincing. It was beautifully done. Yeah. But that was super fun. I, I enjoyed it. This is now a thing. Teresa has coined something. We were walking down that little road oh. between Little Mermaid and, like, the San Francisco side where, like, where the restrooms are there on the way to Grizzly Peak. And we saw none other than Tony Baxter walking we were, by. Yeah, we were getting off the Little Mermaid attraction, and all of a sudden I paused because I could see Tony coming through the through the crowd and, and yeah. Teresa has now <laughs> referred to this street as Tony Baxter Way yeah, I don't, which I, feel I actually like, it, like this idea it probably has an actual official name I can't ever remember what it is but yes to, to us it's now known as Tony Baxter Way since that was the first place that we've ever gotten to see Tony Baxter in the parks in, enjoying the parks yeah so that was really fun. Another fun sighting that we saw. We're gonna have to maybe name this, rename this little area too. We were wandering back in New Orleans Square. I think I don't know if we were trying to fill our water bottles or where we were going, but all of a sudden, that like jaws dropped, and there's Josh tomorrow walking through New Orleans Square. He was he was on a mission though. So yeah, he was trying to get through. We just got to kind of smile away from afar. Same thing with Tony Baxter. We understand that they're just people too, and they're here to enjoy the parks. Yeah. So we just kind of admired from afar as, as Tony walked by but it was it's still really fun to see these people in the parks enjoying the parks especially someone like Tony who like created a lot of this yeah. stuff you know he spent Very a lot cool. of time professionally here for sure we went over to the Grand Californian because we wanted to make sure that we could see Teresa had heard that there was another confectionery display in the lobby much like at Halloween time where they do like the oogie boogie display this time they had one there for the D23 Ultimate Fan Event for this year. And it was Sorcerer Mickey that was made out of all types of sugar and stuff like that. Teresa actually has a photo of I the... did. I took... Because I, I love seeing how they made it. So it was 60 pounds of powdered sugar, 40 pounds of fondant, 25 pounds of rice cereal, 15 pounds of white chocolate, 10 pounds of marshmallows, and eight pounds of egg whites. And this thing was not to the scale of other displays they've done, like Oogie Boogie Bash or the Gingerbread House or anything. And it still used that yeah. that big of an ingredient list. Yeah. Very magical. But this team that puts these together, the pastry team, is just incredible. We really have enjoyed the Gingerbread House this year that's in the Haunted Mansion. We've been fortunate to get on the Haunted Mansion each day. And twice. So three of the times that we've been, of the three times we've been on there twice we've been paused in front of the ballroom scene so we've been able to kind of admire and appreciate the the detailing on this year's gingerbread house a little bit more yeah one of the things i purchased at the little candy cart there in the lobby was like a like a five or a six pack of pretzel rods that were dipped in chocolate and i was actually pleasantly surprised i kind of had low expectations for it because I used to get pretzel rods back in Pooh Corner a lot. And these were prepackaged, so I thought that maybe they weren't as fresh. They were super fresh. They were. And delicious. I shared them with Teresa, and we sat in the lobby and enjoyed the great air conditioning and the ambiance of the Grand California and ate the pretzel rods and enjoyed our time there. It was very fun. After that, we decided to kind of wander around in downtown Disney because there was also more celebrations and photo ops happening there we got to see a painting being worked on there's a sorcerer we should actually maybe if we have time go we should have checked that out last night i completely forgot to yeah. go check out the finalized one of it but nate barndowski was actually there and working on the display that was showcased in downtown disney down by the old espn zone building it looks incredible and very magical when we saw it and it was not even finished so i'm curious to see like 
how much more magical it looks now that, now, it's, finished, that yeah. it's like totally finished i thought it was basically done and then we were chatting with him he's like oh no i'll be back tomorrow i still have to work on this that and the other i'm like what like it looks beautiful as it is so i can only imagine they very have... very talented he's the one that does a lot of the different chalk artwork that has that forced perspective on it that if you stand in certain places it looks like you're you're part of the art which is so so cool these were neat because instead of it being chalk it was painted on like a giant canvas or some sort of material that so it was paint so now it it can be used and out for much much longer instead of when the next time it rains and washes away they had two like photo op areas they had one that was what was that first one it was like for one of the for the new wizards of waverly place okay which we didn't take a photo with that because we that's not been one of the shows we've been interested in. But right next to it, they had another D23 Day at Disneyland mural that we took it in front of. And they actually had some things, a selection of signs you could hold up. Yes. The one I chose was the Matterhorn that said D23 Day at Disneyland on it. I, of course, had to choose the Haunted Mansion one. Surprise! It was an option. It needed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that we that, that you chose that one. It's I totally know. a surprise, no, shocker. Ever Unlike that. you. But what we were really surprised is when we walked back through downtown Disney, it was really like calm. calm. The area, like there wasn't a large crowd. It was real easy to navigate. Mm-hmm. It felt very relaxing almost to kind of walk around it was a little eerie because i don't i can't remember a time that i've recently in the last several years that we've been here that we've walked through downtown disney and had it be that chill like yeah it was wild we kind of take up taking pictures like what this is we never get to see this much of the concrete you know i haven't seen it that non-crowded since like the early 2000s which is crazy pretty wild We rounded out our evening, of course, with watching the evening performance of Magic Happens, which was super magical. But the thing that was even more crazy than Merlin's sweet, sweet dance moves was as we were sitting and waiting for the parade on Main Street, I'm just casually sitting there looking around, people watching, you know, doing what you do when you're waiting for a parade, like we're doing right now. And who do I see? None other than Pete Docter, the chief creative officer of Pixar heading on down the middle of Main Street. And then Tegan and I actually found a different spot that we liked slightly better, so we crossed over the street, sat down, minding our own business again, just enjoying the sights. There was a couple of characters that were making their way down Main Street, and you spotted... Dave Filoni and John Favreau just prancing down the street right behind Pluto. Yeah. Like, what? Like, the fact that you saw Pete Doctor was already, like, amazing, yeah. and then it was like, oh, and here's these other... Well, do- Think of all the people we saw that day in general. We saw Josh tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's a if if you ever Tony want Baxter. if you want a good probability of seeing famous Disney people, D twenty three day at Disneyland is the time, or any time around D twenty three Expo. Yeah, and the event event because like in the past we've we've gone over and eaten at like Trader Sam's at the Disneyland Hotel, and there's a bunch of people over there too. Find a couple people there. The lobby of the Grand California, like. Anywhere on property, you have a highlight. Yesterday, we bumped into Jody Benson after we were leaving our viewing area for Magic Happens. So that I mean that apparently Magic magic. Happens is accurate. Magic is happening. You meet people after the parade. We met up with Lynn from the Sweep Spot, and we went over and enjoyed Cafe Orleans, which I have not eaten at Cafe Orleans. I don't think ever, or if I had, it had been a really, really, really long time ago. Other than the one dessert we bought there for like a special food option and Teresa had the actual I always blank the classic on, Monte, Cristo. Monte Cristo and I had the three cheese or the cheese filled one and both were very good and the fries and the dipping sauce with the fries actually the dipping sauce with the Monte Cristo all were very good and we did that intentionally because neither of us could choose which one we wanted so we decided we'd order one of each and then because they cut it in They're half for so you so large. we swapped halves so we each got to enjoy half of the classic traditional Monte Cristo and half of the cheese version. It was very, so good. Very, good. I really want to try the cheese version. I was very surprised, though, that I thought it was going to be much too rich and much too heavy and that I just wouldn't be able to potentially even eat half, let alone a full. It was much... It was not as heavy and dense as I thought it was going to be. I was afraid that like, I was going to eat it and just have like a rock in my stomach the yeah. rest of the evening. Not at all. I I don't know what kind of sorcery that was, but 
I was very surprised. Disney Magic, Teresa. That's Disney what's called magic. Disney Magic. Disney Magic. Comes in all shapes and sizes and forms. And that was kind of the end of our day there because we knew that we were going to get up early the next day to go to the expo and we were kind of still tired from travel and all of that. So we went back to the Hojo where we stayed once again and had another great experience yes, as always. always. And then just to kind of overall recap the last two days in the park, we're recording this on Tuesday at about 2.30 in the afternoon while we're waiting for while we're waiting for Magic Happens to go by, as Teresa said earlier. The parks have been busy. Very busy. We were surprised for D23 Day, but it's also happened yesterday and today. Usually the parks don't feel like max capacity or like super crowded till about midday. Mm-hmm. But on D23 Day and the last two days, by 10 a.m., it's been very crowded. Yes, yes. Well, this morning, when we get it, we got here a little late again this morning, about like nine. And there was already wall-to-wall people. Yeah. We had our, our lightning lane for Honda Mansion was right away. And it, the congestion in New Orleans Square was already starting to build at, like, 9.30. I was like, now it's the hard benefits to... of rope dropping has gotten out. <laughs> well, the thing is, is there's there's a few things that it could be, and we really don't know what what it actually is. So the, the most obvious, I feel, is... There's a, there's a few things down right now. The train yeah. is not running. The monorail's not running. Space Mountain's closed. Of course, Tiana's is not open. Haunted Mansion is just the virtual queue only. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that would normally eat some folks that are just not operating right now. Yeah. And but, then pair that with the fact that it was the D23 Expo and all sorts of fans are here. There was tons of fans from all over the world. So they're probably utilizing this time to not only enjoy the D23 events, but then also enjoy time at the park. So yeah. I think there's an influx for that. Plus... All of the passes that had summer blackouts are now open again. So those people that have been missing Disneyland are now able to come back. So I think it's like, I don't want to say perfect storm. It's an unfortunate storm. Sure. <laughs> of all of that happening together. But there's still stuff, though, because like Tag said, we just got off of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway that said it had a crazy wait time. And we still were able to breeze on through. So One of the other like first times for us was... We were able to meet up with a weekly tier last night and join them at Lamplight and we're able to experience World of Color, not from that section that kind of juts out that I think would actually be a pretty good place to watch World of Color and see everything, but we were a little off to the side by the bar, but it was still a really cool perspective and being that close to everything was really cool. Yes. Also, tried the S'mores Donuts. Teresa tried it first, and she goes, oh, Tag, you're going to love this. <laughs> and it was pretty, pretty good. So it had lots of sauce, lots of marshmallows, and then there was also, I think it was a graham cracker dipping sauce. So tons of sauce. It was, it, they were good. Very rich, but good. Yeah. The one thing I want to say about our World of Color experience last night was, the thing that was so fun about it was, I joked at Tag halfway through, I'm like, I have such a deeper appreciation for these fountains because we were so close Mm. to some of the fountains that you could kind of like see how they were working, how they were moving and all sorts of stuff. It was mesmerizing to watch the bases of the fountains and how they work. That was really, really cool and not something you get to experience all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I think we were closer, especially to the, to the bigger fountains in the back that do the stuff that you don't get that close for. So If you've seen World of Color before and would like to see it just from, like, a different perspective, that's a good place to kind of do it. I wouldn't say if you've never seen World of Color to go there because I think you do miss a lot of... Yeah, you miss some of the show. Yeah, but if you've seen it and want to experience something different, that's a great place to do it. I don't have anything else to talk about. I think we covered everything. I think we did, too. We're just going to enjoy the rest of our day here at the park. Thank you for anyone that's been following us along this wild ride. And for those of you that met us in the park, we enjoyed meeting all of you. Yes, or if you stopped us at D23 or came to our meetup, which was crazy attendance. Terry Harden is a very popular person and very deservingly so. Yes. But it was tons and tons of fun. So I wish I would have kept count as to how many weekly tiers we got to meet this weekend. And so many new weekly tiers, people we hadn't met before. Yes. We've had previous visits where we've met people that we've seen before, which is always welcome as well. Yes, we love that. But it's nice to see, like, new people, because then it's like, oh, good, we have, like, we more do people. have people that more, listen. <laughs> more people, more community, more friends. We exactly. love it. So thank you, yeah. everyone. We had a fantastic trip. Again, we hope you have all enjoyed kind of listening and following along in all of our experiences. Yeah. 
I, it, it's been great. It's been it's been a very full, very information soaked trip with all the different announcements and things we got to do with with the D twenty three experience. But it's been really really great yeah. all at the same time. And we have no idea when we're going to be back. We don't. We don't. We don't have, have another trip, trip planned. planned. So we're kind of also trying to just take in the atmosphere of being in the park because we don't know the next time we'll be here. Exactly. But we will, be back. we will be back. We will be back sometime soon. We just don't have anything firmly on the calendar yet. Yeah. Well, our friends over at All Enchanting Ears have been busy. They make fun and unique ears, plus ear holders, straw toppers, little veins, and so much more. They are offering a special discount code available to all weekly tiers. So be sure to use code DLWEEKLY10 for 10% off your next purchase. Head on over to allenchantineers.com to check it out. Woo! Welcome back to Trivia Land Show. My name Raymond, and I hope them answers are bigger and better than this here back porch I got attached to me. Don't you know Evangeline and I wish y'all the best of luck? Yes, hello, welcome back. How are you two feeling? Still that positivity rolling through you. I, I feel like we did pretty good this week. I'm I'm glad you feel that way, Tag. You don't feel that way? <laughs> no. It's because you're not thinking I positively, feel, You know Teresa. what I'm thinking? I feel like the two in the middle are my, like, those are my... Iffy ones? Yeah, my iffy ones. I'm thinking we did 50... I'm, I'm thinking we got 50%. Okay, well, let's find out. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to those three listener questions, but first, mine. Which side... Of the cars has the steering wheel on the Mr. Toad attraction. You both said right, and just like in the UK, that's the right answer. Woohoo! Good job, us. I was thinking I might be able to get you two to doubt yourselves. <laughs> I mean, we've it's a good bet. We ride Toad enough that I feel like we would be every visit kicking ourselves if we got this wrong. Yep. All right, question two from listener Todd B. Other than in Toontown, where in the parks can you find a direct call out to who framed Roger Rabbit? I'll let you two argue for how much of a half point you deserve for being at least in the right area. But what you should have been looking for was outside the five and dime on Buena Vista Street, there's a small staircase that leads up to a bay of mailboxes, one of which is labeled E. Valiant in reference to Eddie Valiant, Bob Hoskins' character in the movie. So, you know, at least credit for take for pulling Eddie Valiant out in that one. Yeah, yeah. right. However, you said Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> I think we both get a half a point. Half what? points all around. I said Buena Vista Street. Yeah, but Hollywood you didn't say Boulevard. anything about it. You just said Buena Vista Street. But I said Eddie Valiant. Oh. That's why I get a half a point. You yeah, get a half a point. We get a half points. I get yeah, we can do those half points. That's fine. Question three, about how many times a year is the floral portrait of Mickey Mouse at the entrance to Disneyland replanted? And uh, you didn't even bother trying to guess how many individual plants are replanted. No. So I'll just share that one with you. I found two articles with conflicting answers. One said eight, one said nine. So we'll take anything close to that. Ten, close enough for me. Six, a little too far off. Mm. Half a point for Tag. <sighs> He's feeling generous and trivial. Answer. Yeah, I know. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't know. Something must be wrong with me. So to answer the other question, though, according to Abby, the base is made up of about 5,300 annuals. So uh, if they replant all those, wow. that's a lot of flowers. That is a lot of flowers. We've had that as a trivia question before, though, like how many flowers are in the Mickey floral. And, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That just means to me someone is taking the time to count each and every flower to know the answer to that. Maybe. And good for them. Final question for the week from listener Shanna D. In the Alice in Wonderland attraction, what is rule number 42? You both said the queen always wins. Well, guess you guys win sometimes too because that's the correct answer. Boom. I love that line though because it's the little guy who goes, Rule 42, the queen always wins. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy reading a little online. This conflicts with the book. Oh. Apparently in the book, Rule 42 is all persons more than a mile high have to leave the court Mm. because the king wants Alice who at the point it had grown surprisingly large to leave the court, she fights back saying, that's not a regular rule, you just invented it. He says, it's the oldest rule in the book, and she replies, then it ought to be number one. So I've never read the book, so I don't know. I just found it super interesting. Yeah. So thanks to our listeners, I learned a little something today. And you know, so did we. Rule number 42, a good nod to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Lewis Carroll is a big fan of that one. You could say I went down a rabbit hole for that one. Oh my God. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. 
So listeners out there, you want to help me learn a few things? Maybe Tag and Teresa as well. We've had a lot of new submissions coming in from a lot of new listeners. So join the crowd. Send us in some trivia and we can help Tag and Teresa learn something new or show off their knowledge. Either way, it's a good time here in Trivia Land. Get those questions to producer Vern and I at dlweekly.net slash trivia. Well, we will be back next week with more Disneyland news and information. So until then, go out and enjoy the parks. And a special thank you to Sidel for editing the podcast. Please remain seated until the podcast comes to a complete stop and the doors have opened. Then collect your belongings, watch your head, and step carefully from the episode. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for traveling with us. And we hope you have a happy and memorable visit here at DL Weekly.